Now in this tutorial what I'm going to show you is how to express 3x over x plus 2 x minus 1 in partial fractions. Now when you're dealing with partial fractions the partial fraction type is always dictated by the type of factors you've got in the denominator and in this particular example I've got is what is often referred to as linear factors okay linear factors let's just write that down for you okay linear factors are factors that have the format ax plus b so you can see that in this first factor here the a is the 1 1x one and the b is 2 and in this one we've got another 1x and the b value is minus 1. Now when you have linear factors they always give rise to fractions that were constants over each of the individual factors. So for instance if I let a be a constant we would have that constant over the first factor x plus 2 and then plus another constant b over the other factor x minus 1. And our job in this tutorial when we want to express any fraction in partial fractions is to find the values of these constants. And to do that what we do is multiply both sides by whatever you have here in the denominator. So if I multiply both sides of this identity by x plus 2 x minus 1 what I will have will be the first fraction 3x over x plus 2 x minus 1 and that's multiplied by x plus 2 x minus 1 then I'm going to multiply each of these terms okay also by x plus 2 x minus 1 and the same with the last fraction b over x minus 1 and that's being multiplied by x plus 2 x minus 1 and what happens is that these two factors here cancel with the two factors here and the x plus 2 factor cancels with the x plus 2 there and the x minus 1 factor cancels with that x minus 1. Now you should really know this I just put this in really just in case there were some people out there that did struggle with this idea. So normally when we multiply through by x plus 2 x minus 1 normally I'd come straight down to this line by saying 3x is identical to a lots of x minus 1 plus b times x plus 2. Okay so we've got that far and we now have to find out what our constants a and b are. Now being an identity this is true for all values of x and one of the easiest ways of finding out what a and b are is by choosing a particular value of x which makes this bracket go to 0 and this bracket go to 0 and if I want to make this bracket go to 0 I would choose x to be 1 because 1 take 1 is 0 so if I let x equal 1 okay, then on the left here I've got 3 times 1 which is 3. Now we change this to an equal sign because it's an equation and as I mentioned earlier 1 take 1 is 0 so a times 0 is 0 so that disappears and then we've got here 1 add 2 which is 3 and so we have b times 3 so 3b. And from this we can deduce that b must obviously be 1. So I've got the value of b now. Now I could get a by making this bracket 0. Okay, and that would be by choosing x to be minus 2. Minus 2 add 2 would be 0. So if I let x be minus 2. Okay. Over here we've got 3 times minus 2 now, so that's going to be minus 6. And that's going to equal minus 2 minus another 1. Sorry, minus 2 minus 1, yes, is minus 3. And so that's going to give me minus 3a. And if I divide both sides by minus 3, I've got minus 6 over minus 3, leading to a being 
2. So what I have now then is that I can say that from these results, okay, that 3x all over x plus 2, x minus 1, is identical to the a value, which is 2, so that's 2 over x plus 2. Don't charge in and write a plus, by the way. Um, just check out next what your b value is. It's a 1, so that's OK, plus 1. If it had been a negative 1, then you'll want to change that to a minus. But in this case, it's 1, so it's 1 over x minus 1. So we have our fraction is split up into two other fractions, which would give this equivalent result. And this is called partial fractions. So in this tutorial then, I've done a quick example on showing you how to split a partial fraction that has linear factors like this. Okay?